Good morning, this is Bruce and welcome to my shop. Um, again, we're um, eight days after we started working on this project, uh, probably even longer because uh, if we go back to the, the, the start of the series, uh, where we're repairing the, um, uh, the, the table, the rotating table and so forth. So here we are, um, we're closing in on the end of this job and um, what, we've, uh, what we had last week um, was um, the beginning of this, uh, this of, we'd set it up, and if you go to the series and in particular number five, uh, gives a breakdown of exactly what I wanted to accomplish uh, here in, as far as making the leads out of concern. And I'd set the, the, the bill up with the angle head on it um, and purely to be able to keep the weight of this heavy table and everything in the middle in the centre line of the column. Um, and my, my plan was to gash, uh, to, to make sure we had it all right, then take the ring gear off, uh, take it to the lathe, machine, machine the land, bring it back, set it up and then, uh, then gash the, um, uh, the leads into the teeth and possibly repair some of the, the teeth that have been welded by somebody else in the past, uh, an item which I want to avoid if I possibly can. Uh, now, consequent to last week, um, this job basically got put aside because there were so many other things that came in that needed to be done urgently. Uh, and everything has a level of urgency in our shop. Um, at any rate, what, um, what's transpired from all of this is if we swing back out here again, uh, what I've done is this morning I came in with the determination to finish this job today, whatever, however long it takes. Now, what I, just, what I did was I, I never took the ring out of, out of the um, setup here. What I did was I, I released the detent that I'd made up. I set the, um, I didn't see where you could see all of this. Yeah, I set, I set the worm gear back into place and I straightened the, the head, of course, and I went round and progressively cut this ring down from, uh, from this point here, down and cut all, the, all the, the residual of the old teeth. Uh, and, the, and the, the, where they'd been chewed away. Um, and then I went round with a ball nose and just cleaned it up. And so, and from there then I, I, I decided that I'd have a try at nodding the head again, but without putting the 90 degree on. And that's what we've got set up now. And we've got all this weight overhang here, which I hate with a passion, but I've decided I just had to move along. I couldn't, um, Thing. Now, the other thing that happened last week, as we started to gash the teeth with a 45 degree uh, dovetail cutter, um, and we, we started to gash around here uh, with this dovetail cutter, and um, set up similarly, but with the 90 degree with the head nod in the other direction, and we run into this area here where the teeth had been repaired, and it just took the, the edge off the cutter in no time at all. So I ordered a couple of new cutters and I tried to get some carbide cutters. Now what, when I was machining around here this morning by rotating this with a, and the milling, uh, miller and, and rotating it, um, uh, using the, the arthritis fourth axis, um, winding backwards and forwards, um, I discovered that even though we know this isn't, hasn't been hardened, these teeth haven't been hardened, this is tough steel. But 40% of this ring gear is tougher than the other 60%. Uh, so there you go. The, you, unless you're doing something yourself from, from scratch, you never know what's behind something. And it doesn't matter whether it's concrete in the ground or a machine that's been put together and it's had some history when somebody's repaired and done things. And what I get in my getter out all the time is I'm discovering little secrets that people have tried to hide and instead of coming forth and say, look, I broke a drill bit in there 
and I tried to get that out, and then I then I broke a an easy out, and I this and that, and I bashed it, and I heated it. They prefer not to tell you all that, and then you have to discover that yourself. Anyway, I've in just over two hours, I've managed to gash the angles of all these by using um, a carbide cutter, a carbide uh, twelve mil cutter, set up in the exact same situation as I had before, um, using the tailstock to um, to do my indexing um, and we will just we'll run through that now with a couple of teeth and I've got all the way around to those these teeth here that have been welded before uh, and a couple other beyond so I've only got about 10 more teeth to do and we'll do some of those now uh, under the spotlight um, and hopefully I'm not going to destroy this cutter just getting these last ones done the worst case scenario, I'll finish the last lot by hand with a die grinder um, because I don't have another carbide, uh, carbide tip, uh, sorry, a solid carbide cutter the same as this. So we'll go ahead now and we'll, um, we've, we've, we've cut this one, we'll now index across to the next one, we'll cut a few so you can get an appreciation of how we've gone about this. So we've knotted the head normally at 45 degrees. We use, we've, we've used a carbide uh, cutter. We never took this out of the, out of the, the rig. And uh, I'm now hoping to within the next hour or so to complete this. Maybe a, a slight tickle here or there with, um, with a die grinder. And if you go back to number five, you'll see what I, what I decided to do as far as doing this gashing is concerned. Uh, we might just get a couple of close-ups there of those two. I'll just swing this down a bit. See if we can get in a bit closer there and still keep quality. But unfortunately, uh, to see those those cuts at forty at forty five degrees here on that tooth. Um, so we'll swing back out again. I'll probably get in the way a little bit here, but we'll show you how we go ahead and um, and gash the rest of these teeth. Um, all things being equal, we managed to do it quite quickly. Um, I've set the DRO to zero, so that gives me the, the point where I run into. I've also got the dial set, and then we're only using the X, um, and uh, the, sorry, the, the Y travel, we're travelling in, coming out again, rotating, etc. So off we go with the, uh, with the next lot. Of course we have the, the special indexing tool that we use and so we'll swing this around a little bit and we'll screw in the tail stop and we'll give it a bit of a hand until I, I get rejection, lock her up and that's the way I've done the hundred odd teeth beforehand. Um, and now we're just coming to hopefully cut gash that without destroying anything. Throw a bit of black goo in here to we'll try and help this. And off we go again. Not as happy now as it was before. trying to cut through those welds and so forth but it is what it is I'm hazarding a guess here also that like a lot of ring gears um, the, the motor stops in the exact same spot and therefore you'll always get that same bunch of teeth that get destroyed uh, and they get most of the load on um, and hence I think 
these, these, these ones had to be welded up, they probably they're probably the ones that bore the grunt over the years. Um, and I've no idea whether these have been repaired once or twice or, or more often. And as I said in the earlier movie, that I decided to go with this setup, uh, which is quite novel I think, instead of making an indexing uh, plate for this, as I've worked it out on the 90 to 1, I would have needed uh, 18 holes in a 33 hole, uh, in a 23 hole plate, and I didn't have it. This is an old unit that I picked up. Um, uh, pretty cheaply and, and that so I didn't have a plate. I had no problem making a plate, it was just time. Uh, well, there we have it, you see the, the worst of the teeth being trimmed up here. I must make myself a decent handle. I've got a little one. It um, goes into the, the list of what we want to have. When can we make These ones that have been welded are also a little bit less of a tooth than the other ones, they've been chewed away as well. As a result of the welding, some of them have more meat on them than others. I'm too excited here. There we have it. You've just witnessed the last of our um, of our of this job. I'll probably go around with a die grinder and just give it a slight, slight tickle. Um, but I think what we've managed to do is to resurrect this old table, get it running again, cleaned it all out, new bearings in the in the pinion. Um, so that's been a, a big plus. And we've secondly we've managed to uh, give another life to this ring gear which is uh, buying a new one is terribly expensive um, and uh, also hopefully showing people that there are other ways so we don't have to use the standard indexing system 
you could also use something similar to what I've done here and it works a treat it's it's as good as if you had have had the, um, the in fact it's taken away some of that worry that you might overshoot when you're when you're doing your your turning and so forth so um, all things being equal I'm now going to clean this up going to clean myself up get on my motorbike and go for a ride have a good weekend